Among the many problems with the IPCC, perhaps the most serious, is that research is selected to support their point of view without proper audit. The hockey stick fiasco is a prime example. So as we look at the report itself, there's one graph that comes out over and over, and that's the hockey stick graph. Uh, they think so much of it, it's, they have it twice on the same page here, and you just can't miss the hockey stick. It's the central icon for the IPCC's argument. All of these multi-proxy studies need to be looked at from top to bottom uh, prior to their incorporation in the next round of UN studies. Clearly, between the journal publication and its use by IPCC, somebody somewhere should check the calculations. Although Dr. Murty and Dr. Gray were official reviewers of the IPCC reports, their input was ignored. They sometimes take notice of your comments. I mean, they don't take much notice of mine because most of the time I don't agree with what they're saying. Uh, but later when I saw the final document, uh, not a single comment from me uh, was taken into account. The IPCC is a political organization set up by the United Nations to provide evidence to support the Framework Convention on Climate Change, which has been signed by governments. It's, it's in, it is entirely political. Where the governments have placed all, placed all their uh, belief in the IPCC, the IPCC have placed all their faith in the computer models. If you want to put in everything that one thinks is relevant to the climate system in the model, it would encompass five million different variables. There is not a computer in the world with the capacity to handle the data, but more important, to handle all of the calculations of interaction and, and complexities of the climate. The forecasts of a 1.5 to 4.5 degree increase in temperature are made by computer models that are incapable of properly handling the most important greenhouse gas of all, water vapor. Now the Antarctic has had measurements made for the past 50 years and it's cooling, you see. And this is the opposite of what the models predict and they have an awful trouble trying to figure this out. Really, we can't put much emphasis on climate models. We, we have a lot of problems with them. Maybe some decades from now, we may have satisfactory climate models, but right now, they are very unsatisfactory. Governments need a totally new way to approach the science of climate change. But what they can't have is a situation where people just yank a paper out of the literature without having done any kind of analysis of it or, or verification of it and say, on this basis, we're going to start spending billions of dollars. Uh, that's just a recipe for disaster. If Canada's government is to base climate policy on real science, then they must accept that their policy decisions should be changeable as climate science advances. Otherwise, policy becomes disconnected from science, and we may waste billions of dollars going in entirely the wrong direction. There is no doubt, however, that natural climate change will be hard on some people. So we need to help them adapt. So where the resources should go is to adopt it. How to adapt to climate, don't fight climate change, adapt to climate change. That is basically what we should be looking at. Speaking out, as we have on this video, is uncomfortable and distracts us from the work we love. The scientists have a serious obligation to advise society to look at this issue. We sincerely hope that you will look at the facts and weigh the consequences of Kyoto. It is surely one of the most misguided endeavors of our age.